Now let's move on to section 5.5 where we're kind of kind of recap all the properties of logarithms we've learned so far and add in a few more. So if, first of all remember a couple big things. One is basically the definition of a logarithm which is that the log base p of a is equal to c if and only if b to the c is equal to a. And remember that's only true if b is greater than 0 and not equal to 1 because a base of 1 would be useless and we always have a greater than 0. Then we also learn the power property. The power property is what allows us to bring t down right here in this step right here. When we had t up here and we brought it down in front and multiplied, it's that property that we're using, the power property, that says if you have the log base b of x to a power, then you can bring the power down in front. But it has to just be one plain logarithm. Okay. Now we have a couple new properties. Our first one is the product property. It says that if you have one logarithm with a base b plus another logarithm of base b, then you can mush them together. Yes, it's a technical term, mush. Mush them together and make one logarithm, but instead of adding, it would be multiplication in there. It's a long story, and I'm not going to fully explain this all, but it's it's based on this property. Remember we learned um, this somewhere along the way that b to the x times b to the y is equal to b to the x plus y. Remember that? Well it's it's this property kind of written in a different way. So you have your x plus y, you have your addition, that's the logarithms, their powers, right? And then you can change that into a multiplication. Okay, so it's that property kind of modified into a logarithmic form, and I'm not showing you how it's done, but just suffice to say, you could read the book and find out how it's done. There we go. Okay, so we are going to use this property to mush this together into one single logarithm. All right, so you can see you have two separate logarithms right now, and you see how they're added? Ah, okay, so we are going to make that and turn into a multiplication, but not right away. Let me rewrite it. It's 2 log base b of 5x plus 5 log base b, oops, base, sorry, base b, there we go, of x cubed. Okay, now your first mission is to take these numbers because if you look at the property, do you see how they're plain logarithms? There's no coefficient. There's no number in front. So we need to turn these logarithms into ones that have no coefficients. So we're going to take this 2 and we're going to move it up and turn it into a power. So it's going to be log base b of 5x to the 2, like that. And then I'm going to add to it log base b of x cubed to the 5 power, because I'm going to take this 5 and I'm going to use the power property. I'm going to move them up and make powers out of them. We don't do that very often, and a lot of time we actually bring the powers down, but in this case we actually want to put them back up because we want these to be plain logs with no number in front. All right, now let's kind of simplify this a little bit. This is the log base b of now 5 squared x squared, right? So 5 squared x squared plus the log base b of x to the 3 times 5. Remember, because we learned the property is that you multiply those powers. Okay, so this is the log base b of 25x squared plus the log base b of x to the 15. So, so far we haven't used this new property. We use the power property right here, and then in these two steps we're doing a little chapter 4. We're just kind of simplifying inside and figuring out what 5 squared is, and figuring out what x to the 3 to the 5 is, and all that good stuff. Okay, so the only logarithm property we used so far is right here. We've used the power property. Matter of fact, I'll put it over here. Power property. And then we've just kind of simplified a little bit, and that's it. using um, power properties, right? not power properties, um, exponential properties. All right, so now I'm going to push these together. This is the log base b of, and you turn your addition into multiplication. So you just 25x squared times x to the 15. This is the new property we just learned. It's called the product property. 
product property. Technically, it's the product property of logarithms, if you will. And then we're just going to simplify a little bit using what we learned in chapter 4, which is this is 25x to the 17, right? Because you add those powers. We're again using that um, properties of exponents. There we go. And we're done. We have one logarithm. It has a coefficient of 1 because there's a no number in front, so that's a 1. And we've mushed together everything else to make one simple logarithm. Oh, I suppose I should say we simplified here at the end because we did. All right, we're good. Now, if adding turned into multiplication, guess what subtraction is going to turn into? Did you answer division? Did you? Good. <laughs> right. Remember, quotient's like a fancy word for division. So you're going to be turning subtraction into division. All right. So let's see here. We've got the log base b of 6t cubed minus the log base b Oh, 5 log base b, sorry. 5 log base b of t. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to get this 5 out of here because we need these to be plain logarithms with coefficients of 1. So I'm going to make it t, 6t cubed right here minus the log base b of t to the fifth. Well, this is no, you don't need that outside the, the parentheses on this one because it's just a plain t. So. You're fine. All right, now we have plain logarithm, plain logarithm. So I can push them together and make log base b of, and I'm going to put the one that was in front, the ones that are positive, they go on the top. So it's 6t cubed. And the one that was a negative with a subtraction in it, that goes in the denominator. So it's t to the fifth. And then all you're going to do is simplify. So right here, we use the quotient property quotient property. And right here above it we use the product prop or the me the power property. This is the power property right here. Right where you bring the power and move it right from here up to the power. And then last but not least you're just going to simplify log base b of you have three t's on the top, five t's on the bottom, so that's going to cancel and leave you t squared on the denominator. And you're done. If I could get it to go over there, there we go. This was a little simplify down here. That's all we did. Simplify using the properties that we learned in chapter 4 for, a matter of fact, probably the first page in section 4.1 was those properties of exponents. And so we're just using those properties. All right, so let's look at the next one. Uh, that looks like it has a little bit more to it. So let's see, we've got 3, oopsie, log base b of x squared plus log base b of 7x minus the log Oh, 2 log, sorry, 2 log base b of 4x. All right, so first thing we're going to do is move the 2 right here and the 3 right here up. So we're going to get log base b of x squared all to the third power plus, now there's nothing to do on this one, so I'm just going to write it again, minus the log base b of 4x squared. You only take the 2 up. Leave the, leave the subtraction right where it is. Just take the number up, right? Because we have properties for dealing with subtraction right here. So the subtraction doesn't bother us. What bothers us is the number. We don't want that number, right? We want these to be regular, normal logarithms. All right, now we're going to simplify. So we use the power property right here. That was the power property. And now we're going to simplify. So log base b of x to the 6, right? Because it's 2 times 3. Here, I'll actually put in this extra step here. Plus the log base b of 7x minus the log 
base b of, and it would be 4 to the 2, x to the 2, right? And again, we're just simplifying, right, using chapter 4 stuff. All right, so this is the log base b of x to the 6 plus the log base b of 7x, again, we never really messed anything with that one, minus the log base b of 16x squared. All right, again, that was just more simplifying. All right, now we're finally going to push together, and we're going to make this into one logarithm. Now, you can do this addition first, then subtraction. You could actually do two steps out of it, and that would be right. But I'm going to be tricky, and I'm actually going to use both properties at the same time. Addition turns into timesing, right? And subtraction turns into division, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this all at once. You ready? So this is the log base b. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. The log base b of x to the 6. That one goes on top because it's positive. This next one is positive as well, so it goes in there as well. So times 7x, but the subtraction one goes into the denominator. All right, and then we just have to finish this out. This is equal to the log, oh, here, real quick. I'll just put this in. What we're using here is both, both the product, both product and quotient rules. or properties, I should say. So we're using both properties at the same time. You don't have to, but it's just faster if you do. All right, now, this is the log base b of 7x to the 7 over 16x squared, and then we can reduce those x's a bit, so it's the log base b of 7x to the 5th over 16, right? Because there were 7x's on top, 2 on bottom, 7 take away 2 is 5, and it's positive, it's, it's bigger on the top. So there we go. We're all done with that one. Oops. There we go. All right, we are finished with that. And we don't have time to do the next example, so I'll do that in the next video. So I'll see you then.